when we look at where things stand in the economy and the discussion of the Federal Reserve, we don't think they're in a rush to cut things. And with the stock market at record highs, nothing seems to be imploding yet in the credit markets. They don't have to do anything. So even though they're not uh, hiking rates anymore, they could just stay at this level for a while. So the other countries on this chart, uh, those are all the ones that showed very little, if any, growth last year. And they're actually the ones, especially in Europe, that maybe they're starting to come out of a recession later this year. But the U.S., uh, they put so much spending into 23 that it's going to be a headwind in 24 that will probably keep things a bit slower uh, than, than people may want. Given the current scenario where the stock market is reaching unprecedented highs, investors may find themselves at a crossroads. Should they continue riding the bull rally or consider taking gains and waiting for a potential correction? Today, we'll seek insights into these pressing questions from Chance Finnecane, Chief Investment Officer at Oxbow Advisors. The 2024 stock market rally has picked up steam as investors consider whether the latest batch of economic data will force the Federal Reserve to delay its upcoming and long-awaited interest rate cuts. Recession fears have faded this year as the U.S. economy keeps chugging along, stocks have soared to record highs, and the Federal Reserve has signaled it could begin cutting interest rates within months. The U.S. economy has been growing steadily since the end of the last recession in 2020, but some analysts and investors are worried that the good times may not last much longer. Chance's analysis of the global economy uncovers a fascinating trend. The United States is the only major economy to sidestep the recession. Another indicator that has raised fears about the recession is the yield curve inversion. According to Credit Suisse's chief U.S. equity strategist Jonathan Golub, the Treasury futures market suggests that the yield curve will revert in 2024 and remain inverted until 2026. Based on historical data, Golub predicted that a recession would hit the U.S. in August 2025 lasting until February 2026. He also estimated that the S&P 500 will peak in July 2024 at around 5,800 points before falling by about 20% during the recession. Chance suggests that given the anticipation of only a few rate cuts this year, and with short-term Treasury yields providing a satisfactory return relative to inflation rates, adopting a wait-and-see approach could be prudent. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, Consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. So global economy, it's interesting. It feels like the United States was the only major economy that dodged being in a recession so far. You've got parts of Europe, Japan, China that have all really been slow in terms of economic growth. The U.S., I think, because of very high government spending in 2023, as well as the generative AI craze, uh, was managed to avoid that. And now at this point, we actually think things are kind of in a weird sort of balanced state where we've seen a bit of a troughing in interest rates, or if you look at US Treasury yields across the curve, as well as commodity prices. You're starting to see the oil price trickle higher this year. Uh, commodity prices in general are starting to go back up over the last month and a half or so. So in terms of what that relates to the financial markets, we still have a pretty high baseline uh, risk-free rate in terms of being able to get a 5% short-term Treasury yield. That's a great starting point for your portfolio. And at the same time, we've got risk assets in terms of the U.S. stock market trading at pretty high valuations. Uh, just looking again today, we're at 20 and a half times forward earnings. And historically, when you get earnings uh, estimates or earnings multiples that high, it's not a great starting point for great returns in your portfolio going forward if you look out five or seven years. So for us, we're looking at this saying we want to try and keep as balanced a portfolio as possible so that regardless of the direction that interest rates or commodity prices go, we think we have something that's going to be able to withstand uh, whatever happens and really is not a time to take a ton of risk considering that very high beginning valuation in the stock market. We think there could be eventually. It's interesting to us too that there hasn't been a significant shift. Maybe everyone is still holding out hope that those rate cuts are going to come through and uh, everyone's just holding the positions they've had over the last several months since this rally in risk assets. But when we look at this, if they're only going to cut no more than a few times this year, and if you actually look, the 12-month Treasury today is yielding 5%, essentially, which would only signal maybe one or two rate cuts, uh, that's a decent place where you can just say, if the valuations aren't great, let's just stay in the short-term Treasury for a while, take our 5% against the 3% inflation rate, you're generating a little bit of a real return, and wait for some better opportunities. Where we see it in specific sectors is there's been this rally after rates dropped and this anticipation of rate cuts, whether it was looking at banks or REITs or utilities, there is this counter trend rally. 
but now the valuation discounts are not as significant. So if you own some of those areas and maybe benefited in recent months, we would be taking a little bit of that off the table because now the outlook is a bit more balanced where rates could move higher or they could move lower. And those sorts of assets really are playing off of the direction of interest rates. So unless you think you are really good at predicting which way they're gonna go next, you probably wanna have a little bit more balance in the portfolio. As the discussion about the looming recession persists, Chance emphasizes a historical trend that a surge in oil prices has preceded every recession. International Brent and U.S. West Texas intermediate crude oil prices are trading mixed on Friday, with early gains spurred by growing consumption in the United States and China. However, the overall weekly trend is showing a slight decline. The upcoming driving season in the U.S. and rising oil imports in China, which increased by 5.1% in early 2024, along with India's heightened fuel consumption, indicate a possible tightening of the market. Chance anticipates that oil prices could trend higher in the coming months or quarters, driven by structural imbalances and the potential for increased global demand. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. The timing of it, we thought it might have happened last year and they, they were able to get through through a lot of government spending. Uh, we'll see if they're able to avoid it again this year, but we would consider that outcome inevitable. And I think to your point, the, the data points that the Federal Reserve tracks by definition are lagging indicators. So if they're waiting to move before they decide to, to pull the trigger and raise rates or lower rates, they're always going to be behind. It may be difficult to explain to the average person why they're hiking rates proactively ahead of a potential increase in inflation or why they're cutting rates proactively before anything turns bad. So maybe they just need the news to turn bad before they decide to the they need the but, air cover, yeah. Yeah, but it just means that they're going to be behind. In a way, I actually think that makes them predictable, that they're going to keep rates up at this level until something breaks that's significant enough they have to take action. And by then, it's not going to change itself in the matter of uh, a month or two. And we're in a cycle that's going to take some time to play out in the downside. In every single recession, uh, it was preceded by a spike in oil prices. So if you look at 1974, 80, 82, 90, 2001, 2008, uh, you saw a significant jump in oil prices that was part of what would lead the economy into recession. So you could definitely make the case that uh, we see an oil price increase uh, to a level that that slows the economy down, that causes a recession, forces the Fed to take action and cutting rates. And, and that could be how this all plays out over the next year or two. Structurally, in the long run, there's not enough drilling. There's still a supply uh, demand imbalance. And even though plenty of people want to say that uh, the need for oil is going to decline in a significant way in the years or decades to come. I think people forget just how many markets around the world, emerging markets, uh, need cheaper access to electricity. And it's not going to come from solar and wind. Uh, they're looking for any way to try and get more electricity going through their countries. And so there are still more carbon-based forms of power that are going to be needed. And because of that, I think the demand for oil and gas is going to stay higher than expected. It doesn't have to grow in a significant way, but just uh, we're not drilling enough to be able to meet that. And it doesn't take much of an imbalance for the price of oil or the price of gas to move up significantly. So for us, I think that's sort of the backdrop. And then within that, on more of a, a near-term basis, we do always want to keep out for if there is a recession that pulls down global demand for oil and gas, then you will see significant drops in the oil price. And we saw that in 2008 going into 2009, you went from $147 a barrel at the peak down to about $30 a barrel in 09. Uh, you saw the oil price go negative in 2020. Uh, in a case like today, you could definitely see the oil price fall below $60 a barrel uh, if you had a more of a sustained recession globally. But because we're not seeing that yet, it tells us that more of the structural imbalance is what to pay attention to. And therefore, you could see the oil price drift higher uh, over the months or quarters to come. And as a result of that, at the start of this year, uh, we were actually increasing our exposure to energy, both in our high income strategy and in our client stock portfolios, just to be able to be sure we were participating in that enough because we think that's a distinct possibility this year. The rising interest rates during 2023 to fight high inflation, however, raised concerns about the global slowdown and increased the chances of the U.S. slipping into recession, which remained a significant concern of the market participants. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, 
give it a thumbs up, and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.